ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. And uh, on this episode, we're going to talk uh, football and a little bit more than just football. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Like um, when you're particularly for me on this on this podcast, uh, it's easy to interview people. But some of the hardest people to interview are the people that you know and the people that you call friends. And uh, I got not only friends, but a, a, a but family member on here on this episode. Uh, on this episode, man, we're going to be sitting down talking with uh, the associate. Let me make sure I got this title right. Uh, associate athletic director for football. Is that correct? Assist, assistant. Assistant. I'm sorry. AD for football. Yeah. Assistant AD for football at Florida A&M University. Um, friend of the show. I mean, again, we like family. I, I've literally known this dude since probably he was like 10. Uh, been friends forever. Uh, Clemson graduate. And like I said, currently employed at Florida A&M University. My man, Troy Johnson, is in the building. Troy, what up, man? Kyle, what's up, man? I appreciate the invite, man. I'm, I'm glad to join. It's been a minute. I've been trying to get on. Your list is long, man. I hey, had to hey, try man. to navigate my way in there. Hey, you, you know, you, you, got some, you got some shoes to fill because Starworth came on here and uh, he, he, he kind of did his thing a little bit. <laughs> hey, man. Star got that doctorate now, so, you know, he was probably on here dropping metaphors and everything you know uh, he, he wasn't he, he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't but he tried um so yeah man let's let's start right there we like i said we go we we go way back uh troy's mom uh miss felder uh then miss johnson uh, was a um a long time employee at uh, south carolina state university where i went to school uh in undergrad and um she was the li- head librarian at South Carolina State, also a uh, classmate and close friend of my uncle, Harry Carson, uh, who they were both in undergrad together at South Carolina State, and that is Troy's mom, so, and Troy's godfather. And so, like I said, Troy and I go, we go way back because of the closeness of our families. Um, but Troy, I, before we get into like your career, uh, you grew up in Orangeburg, South Carolina, which is where South Carolina State is. I mentioned that you went to undergrad at Clemson, Mm -hmm. So how, and I never asked you this, I'm going to ask you now, how and why do you leave Orangeburg and go to Clemson? Because I, I, we, I think we, I know we talked a little bit before your senior year in high school and, uh, you know, I guess it probably was assumed that you were going to South Carolina State. So how do you leave Orangeburg to go up, up North, uh, to the Northern, Northwestern part of South Carolina and Clemson University? Man, it's, it's a funny story. So I always knew I wanted to do something in sports and I wanted Mm -hmm. to major in some shape, form or fashion in sport management or something along those lines. And at the time, South Carolina State didn't really have that. You know, the closest thing to it was was the PE department, you know, with Dr. Ken Mosley and, you know, all those people over there in in, in Mm -hmm. PE. So, you know, like you said, it was kind of the unwritten rule, you know, that I'm just going to go to South Carolina State. I went to Felton. You know, my mom worked on campus, still works there to this day. And so mm-hmm. I had been a ball boy with you guys, and I had been a ball yep. boy for Coach Sky, and, you know, all of those type things playing into it. And so I think everybody just automatically thought I was going to South Carolina State. But the crazy thing was, I noticed, I said, me, I <laughs> never applied to South Carolina State. I never really? filled out an application or anything. Now, my mom did for me. Okay. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, at first, I was really going to Florida AM. Crazy mm-hmm. as it sounds, right? Really? I had, applied, I had applied to FAM. FAM had a upstart sport management program at the time. And my cousin from Jersey had came down and he was going to FAM. One of my good friends, Alex Barron, who played high school ball with me, he had committed to Florida State. So he Florida was going State, to Florida State, right? And mm-hmm. so I was going to FAM. And then Hemby. Uh, Ryan, not Bobby, but him, uh, <laughs> Shout out to Ryan. Yeah, he committed to Clemson. Okay. And so when he committed to Clemson, Coach Stock, who recruited Ryan, and then he recruited Woody and Jackie and all those guys, he came back to Orangeburg and was like, hey, we have, have this equipment manager program that gives scholarships, you know, to guys that come in and work in the equipment room. And he was like, I think you'll be a good fit. 
And so I went home, I talked to my mom about it. And mom was like, well, you got fam on one hand and you got Clemson on the other hand. Clemson's in state, fam's out of state. I ain't paying out of state tuition. <laughs> so I know that's right. <laughs> you're going to Clemson. You know what I'm saying? And and they were giving they were giving some money. So mm -hmm. she knew I really didn't want to go to South Carolina State. And I and I think probably Kyle because I, I probably had a honorary degree from there from being around right. you guys all the time. Right. You know, from, from being with football players and then hanging out in Mitchell with the basketball team. I, I knew what state was. I, I knew what it was mm -hmm. all about. So I had to take my, you know, take my talents elsewhere, as LeBron says. <laughs> and, uh, and and go to Clemson. So I went with, with, with Ryan. We eventually became, you know, roommates in college and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. No doubt. No doubt. And, and it's funny hearing you tell that story because, like, you spent so much time on the South Carolina State campus. I'm pretty sure there were probably, and there probably still is, a bunch of people that think that you went to school there and graduated no from there. And, and when I tell you guys, his mom still, even to this day, is the sweetest. She looked out for us so many times in South Carolina State when we really probably didn't need to, um, <clears throat> but she was always there. And, um, you know, it was it was great to have somebody like that who was a name and a face on the campus, you know, particularly because I'm coming from Florence at the time. I didn't know anybody there except for the couple of people that came down, my cousin Eric and a couple other people that I went to high school with. But, um, yeah. yeah, she she definitely looked out for us. So, so it, it makes sense. It makes sense now. I, I, yeah. And, and I, told, I told this story before, like, you know, South Carolina State wasn't number one on my list either. Like, it was like fourth or fifth. So, you know, it just so happened. It was happened. last resort, man. Like, it, mm -hmm. it was going to be the last resort. You know? mm -hmm. and, but to your point, a lot of people still think, you know, when they see me now, if I'm at a South Carolina State event, you know, they'll be right. like, hey, man, what class did you grab? <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't, dog. No, I took some classes, but I didn't I didn't graduate from that. What was, um, what was, I know you mentioned Ryan Hemby. Um, and um, Clemson had a pretty good football team in the time that you were there. What was, but it wasn't Clemson wasn't the juggernaut, the national power that it is now. You mentioned Woody, Woody Dantzler, yeah. uh, who I think, I think at Woody's senior year, wasn't he in the, he in the Heisman running? He was like top 10 he in Heisman voting, something like yeah. that. Yeah, um, so Clemson was, um, they, they were really good school, uh, nationally, but they weren't the national powerhouse. Uh, what what did what was what was special about Clemson football at that particular time, and did you ever two part question? What was special about Clemson at the time as far as football, and then did you ever see Clemson being this, you know, juggernaut that it is now? Man, I tell people all the time that it's something different about the air in, in, in Clemson, right? Mm -hmm. And just I think anybody that goes to school anywhere you know, they consider their schools to be one of the best and all that type of, of stuff. So we like to say it's God's country and all of that, right? <laughs> this guy turns orange and purple when the sun sets and all that. But at the end of the day, the people is what make Clemson special. Okay. You know, when I went there for the first time, I think we went to a game uh, my senior year in high school. And, you know, for the first time, seeing the guys run down the hill and hearing that roar and, and, and how the people just – take hold to it and everybody walking around, you know, Hey, what's up tiger. Hey, what's up tiger. Like everybody just embraces, you know, each other. And so when you finally get there and you get in school and, and you're around, you know, parade all Americans and, you know, first team, all ACC guys and all of that, just to see them take you under their wings. Right. I, I got there. We were a senior heavy team when I got there. Okay. We had Rod Gardner who ended up being a first rounder for the Redskins. Yep. Uh, we had Akil Smith, who was on the offensive line. Travis Zachary played running back. Uh, we had a senior laden offensive line team. Uh, Nick Eason on the defensive line, who ended up playing in the league. And, you know, Rob Carswell and all of those guys. Like, I can go down the list. But they took you under their wings. And, like, you know, you became one of them immediately. You know, okay. I, some of my best friends, you know, two-thirds of the guys that was in my wedding, I met at Clemson. You oh wow! I mean? uh, That's the stuff. My son's his couple, his godfathers were you know Clemson grads, and they played on those teams. So I think it 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 starts with the people, but it started to take off. Kyle, my freshman year, we started off like three and zero, and we beat Missouri and Clemson, and and it was like, uh oh, like this is about to this is about to get serious, mm -hmm. and we came, we were number three in the country either three okay. or five. 
five in the country my freshman year. We started off like eight and oh, and we lost to Georgia Tech at home the week before we went to Tallahassee. We was coming to Tallahassee to play in Bowden Bowl two, yeah, like, man, or three. It was and I'm, a, I'm a Florida State fan too, so I, I, I remember this yeah, very well. We, we lost to Georgia Tech at home on the last play of the game. Uh, they caught a touchdown in the back of the end zone to beat us, and that was our first loss of the year. And we went through Tallahassee the next week to play Florida State, and I think they were like number one or two yep. in the country at the time with Winky and Bowyer and 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 Greg Jones had running like they were loaded. Like mm-hmm. I think ten out of the eleven guys on the starting defense played on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Right, like, it, it was crazy, and it was hype because we were supposed to crush Georgia Tech and go into that game nine and zero. And both of us were going to be undefeated. undefeated. The winner was going to win the ACC, have an upstart, you know, leg at the national championship. And when I tell you, they gave us the business. Yes. Like, they gave us the business. Like, I think Winky hit Snoop Minutes for like a 99-yard touchdown. Snoop Minutes. On a, on a play action. <laughs> I think they ran power, a play action power. And he pulled up and threw the post ball like, and Snoop hit his head on the goalpost like he was doing <laughs> right. And so we lose, you know, we lose the Georgia Tech, we lose the Florida State, and then we come back and we have to beat South Carolina on a field goal. Like mm-hmm. Woody throws a, a goal ball to Rod, Rod catches it, falls out of bounds. Uh, all of the South Carolina people say it was a push off, but I mean, right, right, right. We just gaining leverage. You know how wide receivers are. Kind of how we, oh yeah, for sure. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> a little bit of that to get some leverage, but God, we got leverage. We we won. We kicked the field goal to win, and then we lost to Mike Vick in the mm. game over that year. Mike Vick was and cold so, too. Yeah, he was. He was stupid cold. He, mm. he was stupid cold. And so I'm looking at it, and I'm like, man. So from my my freshman year to sophomore year to my junior year to answer your second part of your question mm-hmm. i didn't think we was going to ever get past that mark because we would always lose games that we weren't supposed to Thanks. right we, we, we never we would lose to an uh, nc state team who really wasn't that good mm-hmm. right? like we would just come out and just like my my senior year we lose to wake forest at wake forest mm. Like who does? Oh, that? Yeah, yeah, that's games that you're not supposed to lose. You're not supposed to lose, and they crushed us. I'm talking mm-hmm. about they crushed us, and we come in off of that game to play Florida State at home the next week, and they number one in the country again. Mm. Right now, we ended up winning that game, and we won, you know, that game and our last three, and and finish. God, we, I think we finished like nine and four or something like that, and won beat Tennessee uh, in the Gator Bowl. Not in the Gator Bowl, in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, you know, mm-hmm. and and had a had a really good year, but I it we could never get across the hump, even with some of the better teams we had. Like one year, like you said, Woody was in the Heisman race. He was mm-hmm. the first player in college football history to rush for a thousand and throw for two thousand in one yep. season. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We had freshman All American and my other roommate, Derek Hamilton, was freshman All American. Yep. Ben Hall was a freshman All American. Aries Curry was a freshman All-American. This is all on one team. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then we signed Roscoe Crosby in that same class, who was the first player to play professional baseball and college football at the same time. Okay. Like we had tremendous we amount had of players. Time. Yeah. We had players on top of players. Yeah. Justin Miller at corner. You had Ty Hill, <laughs> who moved from running back to corner. And I'm talking about guys that have, have played in the league for a long time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so we just could never get across that hump, man. And and you never thought that it would take off mm-hmm. the way that it did. But I think what happened, and I'm not going to say I think, I know what happened. They signed a transformational player in Deshaun Watson. Oh, there it is. And it is. And, 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 and it, it's crazy because as I'm listening, you tell that story, Troy, I tell people all the time, like having grown up in South Carolina, I explain to people like what you see at Clemson now, I was like, that didn't happen. You know, they mm-hmm. were – traditionally you know i mean they won the national title in 81 but they were like a nine and three maybe eight and four type team university of south carolina when i was probably in like middle school they were in the metro conference which doesn't exist exactly anymore. they left the metro conference and went to um what? hey this clark calling me 
<laughs> hey, uh, Clark. Hey, I'm on. Uh, I'm on the podcast, man. Say what's up. <laughs> All right. I thought I had my phone turned off. Um, I'll call it back. Um, I should get a fine for having my phone on during the interview. Um, but anyway, the um, yeah. So it's like you don't. You don't have. We didn't see that type of dominance or whatever like that. And then Clemson just takes off. Uh, and it's funny because you mentioned, you know, Deshaun Watson, you know, having living in Atlanta, there's people in Atlanta that are still mad the fact that Deshaun Watson basically was in Georgia's backyard yep. and couldn't couldn't get him. And he goes up the road to Clemson and the rest is, is you know, as they say, it's history. Um, so even going back to coming from high school, coming from Orangeburg, South Carolina, Orangeburg Wilkinson High School, then you go to Clemson and you take this scholarship and you're dealing with equipment. Mm-hmm. What what was that like? Because like that's not <laughs> something that you don't, you know. Because I was a marketing major, you you, yeah. you know, especially you know from being on a football, being involved with a football team, and being on a football team, particularly in college, that's not really the majors that you see. You see guys with you know, PE majors. You you have you know your office alignment that'll be you know, uh, uh, space engineers and stuff like that. But yeah. you know that that ain't really the, the the thing. So how was that at Clemson? Man, you know, we had a really, really good program, okay. right? And so, in the equipment room, it, it, it was a, it was a plethora of different types of majors in there, mm-hmm. right? I think I might have been one of the only ones, me and maybe Kurt, the sign man, who came in with me. Uh, that's a that's a crazy story in itself, but I think me and Kurt might have been the only ones that majored in PRTM, which okay. was Parks Recreation Tourism Management. Uh, but we had some package of science majors in there. We had some education majors in there. Uh, we had some management majors in there. So it was about 12 of us mm-hmm. uh, on any given year in the equipment room. And we all, you know, had majors out of this out of this world. But the difference, I think the difference between me, uh, Darren Harrison, who was also from Orangeburg, okay. and everybody else in the equipment room, me and Darren was just there because of our relationship with Coach Dobb. Okay. Right? The other guys were there because they grew up Clemson fans. Okay. Like this was a dream for them. You know what I'm saying? Difference. Yeah. Like they dads and they moms were season ticket holders. And one of our one of our buddies in the equipment room, Jim Bickley, his parents had a had an RV that parked in lot four. And so every game, every home game, we would go set up the stadium and then shoot over to their RV and get food. And like, mm-hmm. so these guys were diehard, lifelong Clemson fans. We became Clemson fans when they started, when we started going to school there. Right, right. <laughs> Those guys grew up going to games and they, you know, you can't say Gamecocks around them. And they, like, it, it was something totally different. So for me, coming in as a, high school football player hadn't played football you know all the way from little league all the way to high school and then now taking this step to come off of the field it was a little different for me because Mm -hmm. it took a little longer for me to get used to not being one of the boys right being another one over here you know and still being involved with the team though still being involved so we got to live up to certain expectations you know what i'm saying you can't make friends you can but you can't you know and if you make friends hey you can't be my friend when you come to the window right Mm -hmm. because i got to treat you like everybody else so if you come Mm -hmm. up for another pair of gloves and you don't bring your old gloves i can't give you a new pair of gloves you know what i'm saying like Uh, uh, troy Troy, we didn't have that problem at south carolina state mr dave went (laughs) mr dave went going going. (laughs) hey gloves man you you better get your own damn gloves <laughs> Mr. Dave didn't want to get no socks. <laughs> Mr. Dave wasn't going at all. But I mean, we yes, it, it was it was crazy for us, man. Like mm-hmm. you know, we, I walk into an equipment room, and I'm thinking about the equipment room at at OW, and I'm like, mm-hmm. man, this is like night and day. Like so, when I go up for the spring game before I you know enroll, okay, and you know I meet with the equipment guy and his staff, and you know Fonz was a great dude, man. I, I talk to Fonz to this day. Uh, our head guy, Alfonso Smith, uh, when, when when he when I meet with him and, you know, I tell him I'm coming and, you know, I fill out everything I need to fill out. He was like, hey, he calls Darren over, which, you know, again, was my homeboy from back home. And he said, hey, man, take him back there in the back and, and get him right. Mm-hmm. 
So I go in the back of the equipment room and Darren like, what size you wearing? So he shirt here, shirt there, shirt here, shirt. And I'm like, I ain't even get here yet. Like, right, right. You got gear and everything. Gear was crazy. So it was a major adjustment for me because I'm used to being on the other side of the wall. I'm used mm-hmm. to walking in trying to make a friend and then you know that's passing out the gear so I can get an extra this or an extra that. And now right. I'm becoming that guy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But it all it all worked out, man. Some some really good relationships and some really good friends that I met in those four and a half years, man. It, it was it was cool. And and so you go from being the equipment guy mm-hmm. uh, at Clemson, and then that's and then after that, it just seems like everything takes off. Uh, you know, just like anybody else that's in college athletics, you move around from Arkansas Pine Bluff to uh, Mississippi Valley State mm-hmm. um, to I. And I'm going off the top of my head. I know I'm forgetting a school. Um, and you end up at Florida A&M. And now for those of you listening, again, this is my guy right here. But Florida A&M is a huge, huge, huge rival for South Carolina State where I went to school. So I don't I don't like their colors. I, I don't like <laughs> I, it. But it is a great school. It, they and, and the reason why they are part of our rivals is because like any time and I, and I kid you not, Troy, every year when the schedule came out, you looked at the, you look for the fam game. When, where were we playing fam at? Because you knew that that was probably going to be the toughest game that we played every year, no matter what. And it, And it's funny that. You know, I remember Clark and I were talking one day, and Clark said he made a good point. He said, FAMU was always the barometer for our conference, the Mideastern Athletic Conference. Uh, FAM Florida AM is now in the uh, SWAC conference. Um, but when they were in the Mideastern Athletic Conference or the MEAC, um, they were the barometer for how good the conference was going to be. If FAM mm-hmm. was good, the conference was good. If FAM was down, the conference probably was down. Um, so you get to FAMU and you find a home because you've been there now. What? Uh, I'm getting ready to start my third season. Okay. I was about to say three or four years. Okay. So, so what has that been like for you as far as the transition from, you know, kind of moving around and then really settling in and this, this looks like this is going to be, you know, a pretty long stay for you, man. You know, it it, it has been, uh, it's been a whirlwind. And, Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that, you know, when I got here, I was hired by two of my really, really close friends, mm-hmm. right? My head coach and and I went to Clemson together. He okay. was a quarterback there. Uh, he was Woody's backup. And then when Woody left, he took over for a little while before they, you know, moved him out and brought Charlie Whitehurst in. So me and Coach Simmons have been friends since, you know, I walked, I stepped foot on campus in 2000. And then we worked together at Middle Tennessee for about five and a half years. about Middle lived, Tennessee. Yeah, we lived together for a year. You know what I mean? And so I, I told someone this the other day. We both kind of manifested this back in Murfreesboro when we were mm. in at middle. We would, you know, we would go out and hang out for lunch or you know, dinner or whatever. And he said, Man, one day I'm gonna get the head job at FAM. And at the time he was like, You gonna come and you know, you're gonna be my equipment guy. I'm like, man, I'm not leaving <laughs> to go work at FAM, dog. Like, nah, I'm not doing that. You know mm. what I'm saying? But be that as it may, you know what I'm saying? We get here. And then the other person was our our AD at the time, Courtney Gauthier. And funny thing about Courtney, when I left Middle Tennessee to go work at Rydell, Courtney replaced me as the equipment guy. Okay. So me and Courtney had had a relationship, you know, through equipment. We had met each other a couple of times. And uh, Coach Stock was like, hey, man, I need a – young upstart guy that can kind of come in and take it from where you had it and take it to the next level and so i reached out to courtney he was like courtney man i'm leaving you know everything's in place brand new you know equipment room we just redid it you know the whole nine yards like you can come and take this and run with it and so courtney came and stopped hired courtney as uh the equipment guy in the middle and then courtney kind of worked his way up the ranks and eventually okay. became ad at, at Florida and m so between Courtney and, 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 and Coach Simmons, you know, I got two of my tight men right yeah. here in Tallahassee. So when they called, you know, the hardest part for me making a transition from moving from Mississippi to Tallahassee was convincing Ash, right? Like, mm-hmm. Ash went for it. She was going, <laughs> I'm, 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 and when you say Ash, you mean your wife, Ash? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. She wasn't she she wasn't with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because we, you know, even though she was in Itabina and I was in Jackson, I still would go home. And you guys know, you know, we talked about it on on, on the mm-hmm. cycle all the time, but you know, I would go home a couple of days out of the week and you know, the weekends and all that. And so now I'm going from being able to drive home an hour and a half, you know, two, three times a week to I'm moving to Tallahassee and you yeah. still in Mississippi. And like yeah. so I had to convince her that in a in a new in a new place. marriage too. In a new marriage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I had to convince her and it took it took a bunch of people. You know, I had to call on a bunch of people to, to you know, to drop their two cents in. You know, mm-hmm. some of our friends that live in Jacksonville and um, Courtney came out, you know, when I came down to look at the job, Courtney came out to eat with us. And she was like, Courtney, I don't want to talk to you. Like, <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? And then, but ultimately, you know, uh, looking back on it, man, it was it was the right move. Uh, you know, it, it was able, it, it, it enabled me to come and, and set some, you know, some groundwork and some stones down. So when she got ready to make the transition, everything was, was set and ready to go. Okay. So, uh, like I said, man, she's been here now going on, uh, a year and a half, almost two, you know, okay. and I'll be, I'll be starting my third year here too. So everything works out for the good, you know, good, good, good. And you know, you know what's interesting, man. I mean, it, you you started at Clemson, which is, you know, big what we call big boy football. Um, and then you're now at a, a, and you you know been around and been at, you know a couple of HBCUs. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call. I mean, we know that there's a talent gap. That's obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can play, you can play. And yeah. we always talk about this on in our group chat on the cipher. Like, you know, if you're good, they'll find you. That it don't matter. And if you got that dog in you, they'll find you. Um, I, I did an episode maybe about a year or two ago on, um, I just, I think I called it the game and I just mm-hmm. talked, no, I, I called it game day. And I tried to put into words what a game day is like at South Carolina state university from a player's perspective, from the moment that you get up to the moment that you walk down to the field, getting ready to the time that you run on that field and, they're playing, you know, the fight song and get up for the Bulldogs and just that whole atmosphere. Um, what is game day like at HBCUs in, in your experience? Because uh, I, I always say, Troy, like, if I could take the game day experience and put it in a bottle and sell it, it'd be a bestseller. What, yeah. what, what have you seen, you know, in the – and you can talk about either FAMU or any other schools, just your game day experience. Man, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um I've I've worked at a few, uh, mm-hmm. and you called out a few of them, and then there was a few more that you that you didn't mention. But uh, game days in Bragg is something about it. Wow! Now I'll say this: leading up to that six o'clock kick, and and we and we, we kick off at six pretty much now because of the heat. And, yeah, because you know, it's a thousand degrees sideline. in Tallahassee. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> We changed sidelines from when you guys played. Like you all used to be on the press box side, and mm-hmm. and fam used to be on the opposite side. Well, we switched that now. Okay. Because okay. Because some Coach Simmons got here, and he was smart enough to realize that the sun sets on that side. It does. So let's put them in the heat, and and we take the press box. So, but so we play at six o'clock now. So now in the age of uh, Saturday meetings and pregame meals and breakfast and all that type stuff. We have a lot of moving parts here uh, due to, you know, facilities and all of that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, we we get to work on Saturday probably about 8 o'clock. Okay. About cool. 8, 8.30. Wow. Uh, okay. Our breakfast okay. is typically at 9. So we'll eat breakfast at 9 and then we're going to, we're going to meetings right after that. So we go to meetings at from 10 to about Mm, 11 11 30 or somewhere around in there we're in meetings mm-hmm. and walkthroughs and then we have a game day staff meeting so okay. up until that point it's kind of it's kind of cool right okay. some people have started to come you know the parking lots hadn't really gotten filled yet you might see a little bit of smoke from the grills but by the oh, time yeah. we come out of the building yeah go to pregame meal we go to pregame at two o'clock and we're making our way back to the facility it's transformed into something you wouldn't even imagine kind of listen like listen. and 
we we started something and i don't know whether they did it before i got here but i know once since i've been here we've been doing rattling walk okay okay and so we come across the street we go over to the old gym in gaker gym and coach does his last minute stuff over there we do our call-ups and our captains we do something special I, i've never seen it done in any other place i've been but we have a captain's talk and so each one of our game day captains they have a couple minutes to address their teammates and, and okay. just get some things off of their chest and so we go captain's talk and then right after captain's talk coach gives his pregame speech over in the old gym in gates gym okay and right after he's done with uh his pregame speech you know I, ha I have a radio so i radio over to the marketing team and i said hey coach is finished we're walking to the door and we'll walk to the door and the band uh, a small section of the hundred is in front of us uh the cheerleaders line the walkway and then fans and everybody line the walkway and we walk from the old gym across the parking lot to the facility to the field house and it's it's electric it's electric and i and i think part of that and you'll laugh at this part part of the electricity in that walk is we got to walk by the brothers so so we, we, we got to walk by the bruh's tailgate and, and you know the bruh's are, are gonna be the bruh's right 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 by this time it's probably uh four o'clock so they know, good and drunk they they good they they good they good and, they good and juiced up they good <laughs> and juiced up so but nah man it, it, it's it's electrifying and and to add to that we knock on wood we have the second or the third longest home winning streak in FCS right now. Okay. So so we're 15, we're 15 and 0, uh, you know, at home in the last 15 games. And so just that alone, the pride that the guys take when they run out of that locker room. And then mm -hmm. our student section has been rated like, you know, number one in the country the last couple of years as far as HBCU student sections go. Um, okay. and, and maybe even top five FCS. Right. Okay. So it, it changed that that atmosphere, you know, with the hundred in there. We've added a DJ. Uh, okay. So we got a DJ in there spinning, and and him and the band are alternating who plays at you know timeouts and quarter changes and all that type stuff. So it, it's taking off, man. And and I got to say it. Yeah, my mom came to the game we played South Carolina State two years ago, and I had her had her out in the north end zone, which is a uh section that you know some of our boosters and all of those people go and they got food mm -hmm. and drinks and all of that okay she was like mm, y'all fancy <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't got this in orangeburg i was like that's why that's why i got it to where you can go out right and see, right right and but yeah it's different man. It, it's um it, it, it's special it, it's special the difference that i think from hbcus to pwis mm -hmm. is you'll go to a pwi game and Everybody be dressed in colors. They'll have yeah, arms, yeah. Their arms for Clemson, or you know, they 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 garn it, you know, for whoever, right? Right, right, right. It's a fashion show in Brad, though. It's it's a fashion show. Any any HBCU, yeah, you might get it. You might get a blue tee. You know, I'm because I'm coming to the game. I'm probably because I'm like, let's say if I go to South Carolina State's homecoming, uh, I'll wear a bulldog T-shirt. Yeah. But um, if it but if we're playing fam in Tallahassee. No, I might not. I might come with a with with some Gucci on. I don't know. You, I you mean, never, you never people, know. You know. Yes. People, yeah, now they may have fire. orange. It may be orange or it may be green. But the way they gonna dress that thing oh, up, yeah. man. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's totally different. So um, let me let me go back to Clemson real quick. Uh, and I, I tell people this all the time, particularly when we talk about um sports. Uh, Clemson, the city itself, mm -hmm. is very really the school encompasses the city of Clemson. Like literally you step off the campus, you're no longer in the city of Clemson, but every Saturday you got what? 84,000 in death Valley. Mm -hmm. um, what is that feeling like of when you're coming down that hill, running down the hill? It's different during the day. Okay. Than it is at night. Okay. During the day, it, it, it still makes the hair stand up on your arm. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, like, like, all right, okay. But at night, when it's a seven o'clock or eight o'clock kick, and it's a pretty, it's pretty too. It's pretty. I mean, just as a fan of 
and I'm a floor. I grew up a Florida State fan, but I, I can I can appreciate what happens at Clemson. Um, <clears throat> it's nothing like it. It's nothing, it's like, nothing it. like it. And 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 the, the thing that a lot of people don't realize, we were having a conversation the other day. Uh, we were actually at Alabama. It was at University okay. of Alabama football camp, and okay. we were sitting around eating uh, lunch. And one of the coaches at Alabama played at Auburn, I think. And so he was like, man, y'all Clemson boys, yada, yada, yada. You know, he was like, man, why y'all show that fake video on the screen when y'all going to the hill? He was like, what fake video? He was like, man, they they stage cameras like they on the bus riding with y'all. Was like, they no, take that's, the bus. That's real. <clears throat> like, mm-hmm. That's real. And, and a lot of people don't realize that. Like, yeah, they take look the bus from what, one, one side of the campus to the other, yeah, something so like that? They bus from, so the locker room is in the west end zone. Okay. And the hill is on the east end zone. So to get to the hill, they get on four buses and they drive around to the opposite end of the stadium to mm-hmm. come to come to the hill to make the entrance. Wow. And the reason is when the hill first was initiated, the locker room was in Fike Gym, which was up the hill uh, on that side of the stadium. Okay. So when they built the locker rooms in the stadium, they said, "Man, let's keep that running down the hill deal." And so that's how they that's how they started it, you know, long long time ago. And now it's just grown to this grandiose type type of event to where it's cameras on the bus and they yes. live streaming it in the stadium. And you know, usually before the cameras, you didn't know the buses have had left until the band started to make their formation. So when you heard da da, you knew the bus was leaving, and the band was starting to make their way to the hill. Well, now they have the cameras on there, and so you see the guys walking out of the locker room, walking to the bus, and the police escort all the way around the stadium, you know, and all of that. Man, it's it's electrifying. It's electrifying. I, I, I got to do it. Right. Once oh yeah, I can there, imagine. I can imagine. Wow. Yeah. Um, on a different level. I got to ask you because um, uh, somebody in the past uh, mentioned uh, they talked about the state of HBCU football. And the person that talked about the state of HBCU football was a coach at an HBCU at the time that he no longer is. We're talking about Deion Sanders. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a lot of, and I and I'm I'm not gonna get into Dion because I've done a podcast on Dion leaving, and I made my thoughts clear about that. Um, <clears throat> but there was a faction, a huge faction of people that you know understood that Dion, sh- you know, he shined a bright light on his HBCU, not necessarily mm-hmm. all HBCUs, but there were times when, in front of cameras, in front of microphones, Dion appeared to speak for HBCUs. Now, as two people, you and I, who care deeply about our HBCUs, um, you know, we want to see them survive and we want to see them, you know, prosper, uh, particularly athletics and, you know, more importantly, because we're involved in football, football. Um, So there was a lot of people that thought, like, because he left, like, the state of college football and at HBCUs, is going to fall off the face of the earth as if we started playing HBCU football when he got there a exactly. couple of years ago. Um, so what is your take on the state of HBCU football? You know, Kyle, that's a great question. And, mm-hmm. and it's funny. I, I, I guess, you know, I, I've known you for so long. I, I knew this question was coming at some point in time. So I, I kind of, <laughs> practice you know with my wife I, I asked ash here a couple minutes ago before we got on i said hey what do you think and i didn't i didn't just solely leave it to football i just asked mm-hmm. her about the state of hbcu sports but what i can say is it, it's, it's a couple levels to this question right one i think we're in a better place Agreed. from top to bottom right because of coverage because of from whether it's social media you know, print media, uh, television coverage, you know, all of those things, right? Uh, Sponsorships, you know, donor giving, all of the things that that go into it. On the flip side of that, we're in a downward spiral that has to change quick because of the lack of 
draft picks that have happened over the last couple of years, right? I think if we can get back the number of guys that are that had been drafted, you know, several years ago, get that number back up to match the giving, to match the sponsorships, to match the television exposure and all of that, I think HBCU football will be at an all-time high, right? Mm -hmm. I don't agree with a bunch of things that that Dion said and did. Same. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but there is one thing amongst others, but there's one thing that he said that that I hold true, you know, to this day. And he told us this when when he first got to Jackson. He says, "I'm going to do everything in my power to shine the light not only on Jackson State but on HBCUs as well." The problem with shining the light on things, it's going to show what's clean, but it's going to also show what's dirty. Facts. You know? And I think <clears throat> that part is what we as a, a culture, we don't work to make good. Mm -hmm. Right? When someone asks me, you know, hey, how's TC going to do at, at, at Jackson, not at Prime's going? Mm -hmm. I said, the question is not how TC is going to do. The question is, how is Jackson going to do now that Prime's gone? Right. And the reason why I say that is certain things that were status quo before he got there, he made them not status quo anymore. Mm -hmm. Because they were worried that if things didn't go right, if he didn't do or we didn't do what he asked, he was going to go to his phone. And he had 3.2 million followers on Instagram and another 1.5 on Twitter. Right. So they were worried about the impact of what he would say on social media. And so that, let's get this right. Right. So my response was, let's don't take it back to status quo just because he's going to TC's there. Facts. Same thing here at FAM. Right. When Coach Simmons, whenever the day comes that he walks out of the door, let's not do the things that we were doing for him because he's from this area because his wife and his mom and his aunts and all his family graduated from fam and all of that. And we consider him a rattler. Let's not stop doing the things that we're doing for him just because the next guy may not be mm -hmm. right. And I think once we can get past those stigmas of, we just need to do the right things because it's right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Once we do that, I think we'll be great. Right. Our facilities are growing. Are they to the level of the P5s? No, they're no. not. But like I tell people all the time, we don't need to chase the P5s. Mm -hmm. I just love the University of Alabama's facility. We ain't going to get nowhere near that. <laughs> ain't even going to get, ain't, ain't even close, Kyle. Right. Ain't even close. For one, we ain't got the space to do that. What the, that too. <clears throat> right. Yeah. But who we can chase, we can chase those low level group of fives. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason why a South Carolina State facility can't match Coastal Carolina. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And There's it's going to no, take money. It's going to take money. But when you look at the type of alums that our HBCUs have produced, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't notice, but when I got the fam, they started running down the list of people that graduated from fam. And I was, I was mind blown. Oh yeah, it's a bunch Will of Packer. yeah, from Will Packer to Keisha Lance Bottoms to K Michelle to uh Common to uh Kane from 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 Power, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? All of these people, and, and I'm that's not even scratching the surface, right? And that's just but, celebrities, you know what I'm saying? The everyday Joe that owns a business over mm -hmm. here, and you know, all of these people that HBCUs have produced. All it takes is if we get a thousand dollars from each one of them, right? If, mm -hmm. if every prominent South Carolina State grad gave a one-time donation of a thousand dollars and say, "Hey, we want this to go to athletic facilities," yep, man, that's it. it the, the the south end of campus would would look like who knows what. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. And so that's my thing. I, I think we're in a good space, <laughs> HBCU football wise. I think we can be in a, in an even better space if our people invested more with their pocketbooks instead of their mouth.
preach. Right? Because, I mean, preach. you know, we have these conversations. Oh, all the time. All the time. All the time, right? But let's just say, you know, and, and we know it's not going to happen because coach is up in age and, you mm-hmm. know, he's probably about to go to the house. But let's just say, but if you runs a table this year and they go undefeated mm-hmm. and and Coastal Carolina says, hey, coach, hey, man, come on over here. Bring, bring all of your winning traditions and all your ways and the relationships that you d- develop with the Zeus's of the world and all of these people and right. come on down to Conway and, and, and let's take this thing to another level. Everybody in Orangeburg would be highly upset with Buddy Pugh. Mad as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But three-fourths of those people that's going to be mad still try to get in the game for free. Mm-hmm. Don't want to don't wanna buy a ticket to get in the game zone. You know, right. all of the things that help grow that revenue pot, they not trying to do it, but you're going to be mad when this guy leaves right. to get another job. You know what I'm saying? So if we can stop Mountain Lip Service and, 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 and write them checks and, and swipe them mm-hmm. cards and and Venmo and Cash App and, and Zelle and all these other uh, money services we got out here. I think we'll be in a whole lot better space than what we are right now. Oh, no question. And I and I agree a thousand percent with you, man. I think um, you know, for far so long we've we've H and I've mentioned this on this podcast, HBCUs have done more with less. And so in, in saying all of that, and that man, that's across the board. I don't care if you're at Prairie View, I don't care if you're at FAMU, I don't care if you're at Delaware State, wherever. The thing is now is now that the light is on us, let's let's do a little more. So, yep. it, so if we're able to do more with less, give a little more, and we can do a whole lot more. Because, like you said, will we ever be at the level or have the facilities? Because, uh, like you mentioned, South Carolina State doesn't have the space to have the facilities that Alabama has. But you can take what you have and enhance what you have, and then you can take it to another level. And, you know, it's something we always talk about is, too, is just – what the vision is and part of it that Mm -hmm. that's a part of it too you know we talk with steve and steve talks all the time about our boy steve Beatty. always talks about you know financially contributing and then also you have to have the vision and i think that's part of not just at south carolina state or florida and m wherever you got to have that vision as to where you want because it doesn't matter if if i called the president of florida and m today and said hey i'm going to write a check for five million dollars if you can't tell me where you're going to earmark that money to go, then my $5 million doesn't mean anything to you because, exactly. or if you got 10 people that's going to argue about where the five million is going to go, it, it doesn't matter. Same if I wrote yeah. the check for South Carolina state. So, you know, and I think sometimes just like, like you mentioned the key word culture in the culture, I think we've gotten the mindset of, and it's kind of the, the battle between the old and the new. And I know you've seen this in your travels, people saying, well, Hey, this is the way that we've always done it. Well, what have you done it wrong? You could have exactly. been doing it wrong for 20 years. And you and, and you nobody still called it out. Yeah, nobody called it out. And you're still saying, Well, hey, this is the way we've always done it. Well, okay, well, hey, let's 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 bring in some new blood who can give you more ideas as to because and that was one of the things that we talked about, you know, with um Prime was that <clears throat> he established a huge social because he was someone who had a huge social media reach. He had, at the very least, he had other schools saying, you know what? We probably should film more. We probably should put more of this stuff on social media. I mean, now, do you have to have every meeting or every locker room session? And in, in, you ain't got to do all that. Now. I mean, that, but that's what they do. And it worked for them. Yeah. And, it's, and, and what works at Jackson ain't going to necessarily work at FAM. What works at FAM won't necessarily work at Savannah State, so forth and so on. Um, before I get you out of here, Troy, a couple quick questions. Um, what's the loudest p5 stadium you've been in p5 yeah p5 not to, be a, not to be a homer not to be a homer lsu was it a day game or night game night game yeah and and it was just against us at middle tennessee mm-hmm. right it wasn't the florida it wasn't the alabama you know what i'm saying so i can only imagine what it yeah. sounds like against one of those guys but it was 2007. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2007 LSU through the roof. It's it's funny because I had Stall on, and Stall said the same thing. He said LSU. He said LSU night games. He said you literally, the ground is shaking. I think yeah. it's like maybe 95, 96 thousand people in that stadium, and it's crazy. Yeah. 
And and their their games, their night games, they've been drunk all day long. So by the seven thirty kickoff, they've been drunk since Friday. <laughs> it's all right. So so loudest FCS stadium you've been in? Loudest FCS stadium. And 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 they aren't FCS anymore. Uh, but I gotta say Jacksonville State. Okay. In in the in the in the time when they were like like that when they were beating okay. you know when they were beating P5s um, and they were in the OBC like it got it got bananas in there and they were they were probably the first FCS school that I saw their student section act like Power Five students you okay. know shirts off body paint. paint. Body pain, you know what I'm saying? And it was a night game. It was in November. It was cold, and they were intimidating. Mm-hmm. Now, they came out the pregame with no shirts on, and our guys were standing there looking at them. I knew right then. I said, "Yeah, this is gonna be a long night. This is gonna mm-hmm. be a long night." And they were, and they were that. They were senior night. It was 2017. Mm-hmm. It was senior night. And they made an announcement that that senior class had not lost a game at home wow. in four years. Wow. Yeah, it That's was crazy. crazy. Yeah, it was crazy now. Um, <clears throat> what was the other question I was going to ask? Um, as far as uh, Power Fives, mm-hmm. um, no, 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 let me, let me, let me take it back. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot on this one. Excluding Florida a m excluding okay. South Carolina State, Okay. Uh, and this can you can you can use your experience at Clemson or wherever. Uh, you did mention the bros. Uh, for those of you scoring at home, uh, Troy's like my man Star Wars is a member of Mega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, who has the best homecoming? The smile so, on his face. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't been to all of them, right? Right. Despite right. Contract right. Belief. I haven't been to all of them. I, I've never been to Ante. You know, they call theirs Jiho. I, I've never been there. Man, um, it's, 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 it's decent. I, I've, I've, I've seen Howard's, mm-hmm. right? I hadn't seen Howard during the week. Like, i seen Howard on a Friday, Saturday type deal. Mm-hmm. Um, there, theirs is pretty, pretty live, right? And I think what makes Howard's live is you never know who's going to show up. Never right, never Be- because it's DC, because of who went there, all of that. But I would say, and I have to had had attend this attend this homecoming. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that in mind, one A and one B. Okay. One A is Jackson State. Okay. Right. One B is Tennessee State. Really. I, and I'll tell you, there's some similarities in both of them, and mm-hmm. then there's some, you know, some some obvious differences. The similarities are both of them play the game off of campus. Mm. Right? Okay. Jackson Stadium is 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 downtown a little bit. Tennessee State plays homecoming at Nissan. Uh, oh wow, I didn't back, know that. Okay. Yeah, back then they were playing two games at Nissan and two games in the hole. The one thing about so both of them have a a pep rally, mm-hmm. right? Tennessee State has theirs on Friday because there's no classes on Friday. Oh wow! Jackson has a block party Wednesday or Thursday night yeah. in downtown Jackson. Oh, we like mm. they shut they shut down about four blocks mm-hmm. of downtown Jackson. And wow. the center of it is a hotel that's downtown called the King Edward. It's the, it's the Hilton Garden Inn, but it's the old King Edward Hotel. Okay, gotcha. And, and so for four blocks, it's nothing but us. Mm. And it's, it's bands, live bands playing on one block. It's a DJ on another block. It's food trucks. It's ridiculous. Wow. Got to check right? that out. But Tennessee State, on the other hand, the first place I've ever seen do this, Nashville Public Schools, 
go on fall break mm-hmm. the week of Tennessee State's homecoming. Wow. And the reason being, they got tired of trying to find substitute teachers. Yeah, because they ain't coming to school. They ain't coming to work. Yeah. So they said, we'll, we'll do y'all a solid. Right. We'll give y'all this week as fall break so y'all can just go and enjoy homecoming. Wow. And, and so... 1A, 1B, and then a very, very close second. I, I witnessed this this year for the first time. Spellhouse. Oh, man, listen. I, I've been a couple of times. It It is as good as advertised. Yes. I almost it, forgot about them. Yeah, yeah. Spellhouse is ooh, close Spellman, and, Spellman and Morehouse for those of you scoring at home. Um, yeah, that's that's tight. Um, if the football was better, they probably would surpass. Oh. Oh no question. One of but them. they, but yeah, because they, the football is not that good. And 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 like you mentioned a little earlier, like their homecoming, like you you're going to be seen. You you strictly wherever you go in that particular weekend. If you're going to the game, you're going to the tailgate. You are strictly going to be seen. You're not going. You're not going to meet nobody. You just you want people to see you. Yes, <clears throat> all day long. Um, so with Florida and M now being in the SWAC conference. Um, you know, the bowl game is mm-hmm. the um celebration bowl in Atlanta. Um, what is it gonna take for Florida AM? Because at the time of this recording, the season hadn't started yet, but by the time this by the time we drop this episode, it'll be right before kickoff. Uh, what is it gonna take for fam you to get to Atlanta uh, to be playing the third weekend in December? It's gonna take a couple things, Kyle. One, we, we gotta get off to a good start. Uh in, in the last two years. We we've fallen out the gate on two, uh, and then we had to play make up football, and, and, and we've been pretty good at that. You know, we, last year we won nine in a row. Uh, the year prior to that, we you know we won about seven. I think it was seven or eight in a row to finish the season going into the you know FCS playoffs in twenty one. But the the bar is still Jackson State, right? It's it's like old Ric Flair. You, mm-hmm. you want to beat the man, and yeah. beat the man. You got to beat. Got to beat him. Yep. And, and they 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 are holding they are holding court right now. They are the reigning uh, SWAC champs, and and unfortunately for the both of us, we're on the same side, mm-hmm. and we play week one, right? Week the, one. Week one. Wow. Week one. So Wait, where y'all playing? Uh, Miami. So this is uh, the third installment. I was about, of the I was about to say we should go, but we ain't gonna. No, we ain't gonna make that. Yeah. So the, the and it's crazy because this year is is total opposite of what it was last year. Last year mm-hmm. we had the week zero game, so they could see what we you know were doing with the new quarterback and all that type stuff. This year they had the week zero game against you guys against the Bulldogs yep. Yep. Uh, in the Miac Swag Challenge. Uh, so we get to see you know because they have new everything, new offense coordinator, yeah. new defense coordinator. Special mm-hmm. teams at whole nine, so we get to sit back with zero and watch them. So, to answer your question, man, we got to get off to a great start, and, and that means playing our best football early and, and winning the Orange Blossom Classic. Because if we don't win the Orange Blossom Classic, uh, I don't know, you know, with the way that their season is, I don't know whether Jackson will lose, you know, two conference games. And right. that's been the thing the last couple of years. So if if we beat them, we got a leg up, right? Mm-hmm. We got a leg up. Of course, we don't want to lose any. But if right. we happen to bump our toe down the road somewhere, um, I think, and this is me, you know, talking on 12, 12 Kai podcast, uh, I, I think the East outside of us two is probably a little even keel, right? Yeah, Alabama is, State will probably be – the third team coming mm-hmm. out of the East and everybody else can kind of beat everybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if, if the winner of the orange blossom classic is going to be in position to make it to Atlanta, yeah, they'll uh, be not the taking anything seat. from the West side. of the Oh, no doubt. Uh, just historically looking at it over the last couple of years, the strongest teams have been in the East. And I think the same thing holds true this year. So uh, I think we have the tools we ha- we have a all conference quarterback returning, which Jeremy will probably be the uh, preseason offensive player of the year. Uh, we have a first team 
defense alignment returning who will probably be uh, preseason defensive player of the year. Mm. Uh, and so we have a couple, we have a, a two tackles returning uh, offensive tackles. One of them was first team all conference. I think Cam might have been second team all conference. Uh, we have a dynamic playmaker in the slot at wide receiver. We signed two JUCO running, not JUCO, two transfer portal running backs, uh, mm -hmm. one from Florida Atlantic and one from Nebraska to go with a returner that we have back there. So we got a good three-headed monster in the backfield. Mm -hmm. Our defense, as they're coined here in, in, in Tallahassee, the dark cloud defense is probably one of the best assembled groups that I've seen in a long time. Okay. In, in the words of our defense coordinator, they got that boogity boogity. Like they, <laughs> they can flat out run across the board. So, uh, like I told you when we first started, Kyle, like it, it's we we pitched a tent in the transfer portal, mm -hmm. and, and so we hoping that you know we benefit from our you know our stay there uh, over the last couple months. I, I told somebody. Uh, I did a podcast a few months ago, and they asked about the transfer portal and how how had how had it impact us at Florida mm -hmm. and I, I said, you know, we aren't uh, we're not trying to buy a house right. in the portal. I said, but we we were in an Airbnb for a little while. There you and, go, and, and and that's what we've done. You know, we we rented that Airbnb, and hopefully, you know, we can get a little return on our investment. Uh, here come December. I think it's like the 18th or the 19th. Yeah, 18th, 19th, like over like that. Yeah, in, in in Atlanta. So I just need the boys there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh for sure. We, whether we play uh, South Carolina State or not, I, I need the boys in the building, man. Well, that, that actually leads me to my last question, man. So Celebration Bowl, fam, you makes it to the to the uh, Celebration Bowl representing the SWAC. South Carolina State wins the MEAC. Um, and so... I'm predicting it now. This this is my my prognostication. So I was going to say represents the Miac family. Represents the swag. We got these old two Miac rivals um, meeting up, heading up in Atlanta. Our whole crew is there. You know, we decked mm -hmm. out, we partying, we having a good time. Who is Mama rooting for? Because <laughs> Mama's Mama's a bulldog. She's an alum. Mama, Mama's a bulldog. She's an employee. She's been employee for years. Yeah, and her and her baby is trying to win his first swag title. Who is she rooting for? Mama gonna Mama gonna have on her garnet and blue. <laughs> <laughs> we played the last two years, one in one in Bragg and one in Oliver C. In both games, Mama had on her garnet and blue. Oh, she gonna represent now. Now she came and took pictures last year outside the locker room and mm -hmm. you know her and coach simmons got a picture together and we got our pictures together and all that and she even she sat in her normal seats in the end zone mm -hmm. but she made her way to the visitors locker room tunnel you know at halftime and all mm -hmm. of that but she gonna wear her garden in blue she gonna well, wear her I, garden in blue. i'm gonna be honest she might be in garden blue but she'll be rooting for you she might be she'll be rooting. She, no, she, but I either way she's she leaving happy yeah, yeah, she she can't lose. She can't lose. She now, can't lose. You know, she, she's even happy either. Way. Now, if that scenario plays out, I mean, you know, we don't want to lose to nobody, you know, especially not in the celebration bowl. But as a crew and as family, if we're gonna lose to anybody, I'm gonna be. I, I the, the thing that I can say is, well, hey, my boy Troy got one. So that's I appreciate. You know, I, I I as much as I hate fam you. Much as I hate the colors, much as I hate everything about the school, is a is a great school, by the way. Um, which is weird because my son is talking about going to school there, and I'm like, number one HBCU in the country, Troy. That's where he he that's the number one school on his list. So I'm like, I'm like, well, you know, I mean, if 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 it's free, you know, you can go wherever you want to go. I was like, but if I got to cut a check, yeah. you know, um, I'm sending my money to Orangeburg, but now nah, it's it's his decision. But um, but now on the real man, like I said, just you know. That we would be rooting for you. Um, I appreciate you know, if, that. If, if, and, if we and I make if, sure I, I make sure I stop by the equipment room and get some visors. Oh yeah, boy. yeah, I, yeah, man. You know I need a visor, man. I always need a visor, man. I always need a visor. Uh, before we get out of here, man, Troy, tell folks where they can find you. I know you're on uh, social media a little bit. I know you're not. You 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 probably won't be as active because you guys are ahead at the time of this recording. You guys are about to, you know, kick it off in a little bit. Man, I'm on uh, I'm on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
uh, during the season, I'm probably most active on Twitter. Okay. It's at uh, Latroy underscore Johnson. Uh, Instagram is rags with a Z, R A G Z 1911. And Facebook is just Troy Johnson. Uh, okay. Facebook is probably the, the latter of the three. Uh, if you ask my wife, I probably spend. 75% of my time on social media and probably another <laughs> 10 with somebody else and then 10 with her. But mm. uh, Twitter is, is probably the best place to, to locate me, especially if you want to talk about, you know, football, family football and that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. He, he is he is tweeting heavily about FAMU um, football on uh, Twitter at Latroy, L-A-T-R-O-Y underscore Johnson. Um, you guys have been listening to the podcast, so you know what if I mean. If you don't, uh, it's 12 Kyle across the board. Uh, the podcast drops every Thursday at midnight. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, from time to time, we drop bonus episodes on Sundays. Uh, if you feel so inclined, hit us up on Cash App, dollar sign, T-W-E-L-V-E-K-Y-L-E. Again, that's going to do it for me. So for my boy, Troy Johnson, fam, you rattler, I am your boy, 12 Kyle, the SC State Bulldog. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. 5,000.